All right, so I'll start the recording and um, let's see if uh, Michael from uh, NXP is uh, available. We'll see here. Hey, Mike, uh, I just unmuted you. Um, hey, Richard. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for joining us. So the first um, kit we're going to provide is the Explorer C. The Explorer C is an extension port for the Raspberry Pi, which is uh, being distributed by Element 14, and um, it hosts um, NFC read IC front end. So um, you can you can do almost everything with, with this one. You can you have um, extensive software example provided by NXP. With this software example, it will be good to get started quickly. And um, this bin 512, which is on Explorer C, is uh, capable of doing Type A reader writer, Type F, so which is failure reader writer, Type B reader writer. It is fully NFC form compliant, so it can do P2P mode. It can do um, tag operation as well, and it can do um, house card emulation. Um, I think this is a great product to get to do any kind of, of NFC. Um, to produce or develop any kind of uh, application. And um, this, um, this software which is provided um, is, is uh, intended to be run on the standard Raspbian uh, Linux, which is being dis distributed by uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And um, the next board we're going to, um, to provide is the uh, PN7120 board. It is a NFC controller board also connected to the Raspberry Pi or to the um, BD1 Black. And um, it uh, uses um, a, um, a complete software NFC stack on it, and it's quite uh, prepared to do easy handling of um, NFC end of messages, um, all kind of NFC operations, and uh, it's just an, a, a good or interesting alternative um, to the Explorer C, depending on the application that the developers are going to implement. And um, to round up the complete package, we're also providing the MyFi SDK. It uh, provides an Android development library um, to develop um, easily um, applications um, which interacts with uh, smart cards or NFC tags. And to provide abstracted layers to easily implement or interface with uh, MyFi Desfire cards, MyFi Ultra cards, um, MyFi Antic, uh, NXP Antic cards, and so on. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing applications uh, based on these products. So um, I'll jump in. I have, I have some questions just from like reviewing the, uh, a lot of these products myself. And, and again, I really I think that uh, the amount of, of stuff that NXP is bringing to the hackathon is, is, is amazing. And it's really going to give um, you know, a lot of band, bandwidth for, for developers to really explore uh, different applications. But so what would you say in your, in your words um, differentiates the Explore NFC from the PN7120 products in terms of uh, what a developer would use them for? Well, the Explore NFC um, hosts the, the NFC front end directly. So that means you can do any kind of operation um, of any NFC operation. So you can access the memory of the NFC text or NFC cards directly. You can um, you can manage or alter the memory however the developers likes. Whereas the uh, PN7120 is an NFC controller, which means that the NFC controller, um, it, it, the, the software support has some, some abstractions in it. So the use of um, sending end of messages or receiving end of messages using P2P may be easier. Uh, but, um, the developer has not that much freedom to use I this. See. So, so you, I see. So, so, so then the Explore NFC is almost like self-contained. Uh, or excuse me, the, the uh, 7120 is more self-contained in that it's carrying out the peer-to-peer -peer operations, whereas the Explorer NFC is using the Raspberry Pi to sort of carry out, uh, you know, the... both, Yeah, both are using the Raspberry Pi, but um, on this NFC, on certain protocols, you have some, some timing constraints, some tough timing constraints, for example, and um, on the, on the uh, PN7120 port, for example, these uh, timing-sensitive parts are running, running inside the NFC controller. I see, I see. So on operating systems, it could happen that you have some problems with the timing, I especially see. for the uh, ISO 8000 free mode free protocol. Got it, got it. On the uh, Explorer NFC, um, you, can, you have the full freedom, uh, but... Um, you can run into time issues on operating systems. I see. And, and so for the, the MyFair SDK Advanced, uh, that's that's basically just a, a pure software library that, that's installable, uh, you know, whether you're running that on, on Linux or is that only Android? No, that's not only Android. And uh, the, the customer or the, the developer can um, edit as a third party library into this project and then simply can uh, make use of the API provided by this library. Got it. So, so, so the, uh, as it, like, if I was to develop an Android application uh, that wanted to, uh, you know, that wanted to. Uh, it's it's providing APIs for card operations. Right. So, like, if I want to interface with like a MyFair Desfire card and, or a Java card. Uh, then these advanced uh, APIs would ultimately not be available on a normal Android, uh, you know, drop. So, so this, this SDK is almost like adding extra, you know, encryption features or, or specific commands uh, that, that are supported by Desfire or Jacob. Well, well it, it makes working with these cards much more easy. So on Android, you don't have that abstraction layer. So if it comes to type 4 text, you have this um, ISO that protocol where you can operate with these cards, but it's not very convenient. And um, this library brings much more um, easiness and much more um, um, features which you can use um, just by um, API calls. So it, it eases up the development a lot. And, and I know that in our audience, uh, we're going to have, you know, a broad range of, of folks, right? We're going to have some people uh, that are coming in that are sort of, you know, uh, technical in nature. I know that we, we have some guys from from uh, Norway that, that are doing a really interesting uh, Bitcoin uh, implementation uh, using, you know, these, these injectable NFC tags. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty well aware of, of a lot of the, the low-level security protocols, um, you know, and, and the types of things that, that you could potentially do with, with the uh, MyFair Advanced SDK. Um, whereas on the other side of the spectrum, we have some folks that are just designers, uh, you know, idea people that, um, you know, we had one, one in particular that, that's, you know, is interested in building a connected uh, freezer, right, where, where he'd be able to then uh, know what's exactly inside, you know, the freezer at any point in time. And that's more of like a UHF uh, RFID type of uh, implementation or perhaps something that is using uh, Bluetooth Low Energy uh, beacons. But, but the key here is, is that, you know, th th those types of, of, of idea guys are, uh, are, are kind of high level and, and a lot of these, um, you know, uh, details might, might run over their head. So um, I'll just open it up for if there's any questions from, from the community. Um, I haven't seen any post uh, just yet. So maybe uh, for now, um, I'll just uh, move on to the next and, and keep us going here. So, so we make sure we keep this to an hour. And uh, if anything comes up, I'll just uh, ping you, Mike. How about that? Sure, no problem. Thank you so much. All right. So next, yeah. next up is, um, is Impinge. And uh, I don't see that Matt Hillary from Impinge has joined yet. So, so I'll just take that on. Um, the Impinge product line is, is uh, extensive as well. Um, and so the first one, um, that I'll talk about here is the uh, the Speedway. Um, so so the, the Speedway reader is a, a UHF RFID reader. Um, that, that means that it basically reads tags, uh, you know, in, in the order of feet, not in the order of inches, like like NFC. Um, and um, 
And so th this reader is, is a, a much pricier than you find uh, an NFC uh, phone or, or an NFC uh, bare bones reader cost. Um, but it, you know the, the capability of distance is, is interesting in some use cases. And so the reader itself, um, you know, has some uh, connectable um, ports. Uh, like the, the way that you work with these types of readers is, is they're literally instrumented devices, meaning that you would uh, install them in a space, you plug them in, uh, you know, to the web, whether it's via Ethernet or uh, some other serial uh, connectivity. But they would uh, fulfill the role of, of scanning for tags and instantly uh, pushing them up uh, to some cloud backend. And uh, because of this independence of needing to run uh, on a on a device locally, they they, they require uh, an extra piece of software, um, which uh, speed you know the uh, the Impinj folks uh, offer, and this, this software is called Speedway Connect. And so Speedway Connect allows you as a, as a web developer to then say this is the endpoint that I'd like uh, you know tags that are being scanned to be uh, sent uh, sent to. And so that that, that software tool is, here it is it's called Speedway Connect. And so that, that's how you'll sort of catch all of the UHF RFID tags that have been scanned. Um, and, and be able to make some sensible uh, decisions based on that information. So if a tag walks through a door, like, you know, uh, perhaps you send an alert that says, you know, so-and-so has arrived in your space. Uh, if, if a, you know, a, a tag is presented, um, you know, inside of this refrigerator use case that I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, it would then say that, that there's a new product in that particular, um, you know, in that particular uh, application, right? Um, the, the key here is, is the reader by itself doesn't really do anything um, because you need antennas, right? And these types of complexities aren't necessarily clear when you're working with NFC because typically when you buy an NFC reader, it comes with the controller and the antennas uh, all in one all in one bundle. Um, in the case of UHF RFID, it's, it's split out. So you have the readers, um, you know, which require their own power and, and most of the time are, are plugged into the wall, so therefore instrumented. Um, and then they require uh, antennas to be outfitted on one of the, the several ports uh, that are available. And so in, in the case of the Speedway, it has four ports available. And, um, and these are the types of antennas that you can use. Um, these antennas are, are meant to be, um, you know, are, are meant to, to do different distances. So, so you can, you can have, um, you know, antennas that, that are measuring, you know, like this uh, large one here in, in the image on the screen is, is meant to uh, detect uh, when someone, for instance, uh, passes uh, in front of a, a portal, right? So, so you, you would use this type of antenna, or it's used often in, in, in a conveyor belt where you have boxes kind of rolling by and, and the dimensions of the boxes can vary um, in size, right? And then the smaller ones, like uh, the one that looks almost like a stick of gum uh, in the bottom portion of the image, that's, uh, you know, met, that's often used in, in uh, race timing applications. Here again is, is that uh, the antennas, uh, need to be affixed to the readers, and we're going to be bringing uh, a few antennas with us for the Speedway to use, um, and that'll allow for you to experiment for different uh, types of applications depending on, on your particular use cases. Uh, the way that you program a Speedway is using the .NET stack. So uh, if, if you're trying to do things where you want to filter out, uh, you know, certain families of tags, you know, uh, or, or you want to be able to control something uh, by way of, of the serial interface on the reader, uh, you can see it here. Um, you know, on the reader, there's there's a GPIO, uh, you know, a, you know, a serial connector that comes off of the reader, and that connects to a GPIO box. Uh, and this box has like a bunch of I/O uh, inputs and outputs. And so what you can do is you can design it so that if you know a particular tag, uh, you know, in a certain family of filter tags walks in front of uh, one of the four different antennas that are attached to the reader, that it, it blinks an LED. Um, these types of applications are all coded using the .NET stack, and they run natively on the Speedway uh, Revolution reader. Um, we're going to be bringing the GPIO boxes. We're going to be bringing uh, you know an LED lamppost so that you can uh, potentially uh, build some of these types of applications uh, using using this reader. All right, so I'll move on to the next uh, reader that. Um, that we'll have from Impinj, and it's called the X-Portal. Um, and the X-Portal, uh, it works uh, very much like the Speedway, uh, with the difference being that it doesn't need external antennas attached to them. It, it comes almost like as a bundled uh, unit. And so here it is. It, it's meant um, normally for doorway-type applications or gateway-type applications, where you're trying to detect when people are walking by or items in a, you know, in a pallet are being driven in and out of a warehouse, for instance. Um, so it's, it's fully integrated. Um, and, and what it has is it has this, this um, you know, dual-phase antenna, which makes for the coverage of the particular portal, um, or the, the doorway, if you will, to be very narrow and therefore not uh, get uh, false reads from, from things that may be happening you know, inside of the room or, or outside of the room, but not necessarily passing through the boundary. So, so again, the X-Portal also um, has the same type of uh, interfaces as the, um, as the Speedway. It actually is based on a Speedway. Uh, if, if you uh, take it apart, you'll find a Speedway inside of it. So you'll be able to do GPIO uh, controlling uh, in the very same way. Um, and finally, um, we have the, uh, the X-Array product. And the X-Array product is, is one that's, that's, like, uh, that's, that's uh, much larger than the other two. And, and, but like the X-Portal, it has a multi-phased array. So it's able to be mounted on the ceiling and provide you with indoor location type uh, information as to where your tags are. So its, it's regions of its antenna are divided into nine separate wedges. And so then you can tell um, by way of, of sort of the signal strength how far and, and what particular wedge a, a, a asset or a tagged asset is, is sitting. And so again, this one also has you know, the, the serial interface uh, and the use for a Speedway Connect in order to uh, proxy up uh, the, the um, you know, the tag information up to your to web backend for you to create a web application that responds to it. So um, that's kind of like the, the general uh, overview of what Impinj is going to be bringing. Um, and we're going to be there on, on site to be able to, to help out with questions. But if, if anyone has any questions, um, you know, on the, uh, you know, you know, on, on any of these items, you can ask them now and I can try to address them. Um, currently, I don't see uh, anyone. So anyone asking questions specifically about the Impinj product. So we'll just kind of move on um, to the next.